Chinese to super delegates of the world. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is not in order. <laughs> I would no, no. So you may start. Yes. Uh, so I'm the reporter for the BBC, and my first question is to uh, me. What exactly does this press statement you just released accomplish? Yes. We're grateful. We're grateful for the Brussels block as a corporate president now. Can we say? Um, uh, we're great. Uh, the, the point of the press statement is to show the interest of the community in the common good. Uh, it is important to us to be a non-partisan actor uh, in the, with respect to the situation in Iran. We are interested in being a facilitator rather than an actor in the situation. And we are committed to helping Iran, if they so choose, to become a viable, strong, and fruitful player in the region, both domestically and multilaterally. We feel it's important to us to emphasize through this that we respect Iran's sovereign rights rather than to interfere with them. And we believe that it would be presumptuous of the committee to take a view or a side in the current situation, rather than, but, but rather to arbitrate, to facilitate, and to work with them instead of exerting other interests or using the committee, and using the Security Council to further facilitate national interests. Yes. Um, China, going to get to your question as well? Well, well uh, China wanted to, I, I can second what uh, Russia has just said, and I think it must also be clearly understood that this press statement can definitely be understood as an invite to Iran to uh, approach the Security Council so that we can uh, discuss with them and attempt to come to solutions and to goals that fulfill all our interests and can further the stability and prosperity found in the region. Thank you. Any other initiatives? Yeah, pretty much what you just said, the Asian China just said is very important. We talk a lot about dialogue and the power of dialogue, which we think is an absolute key. Um, um, solution to the problem here, and we absolutely would support Iran on dialogue, be it um, internationally or national. Yes. Um, yeah, but the press statement generally was agreed upon by Western nations that may seem more critical of Iran, as we we also saw this as an opportunity for dialogue, dialogue that is always needed and will never be wrong. That is also why we're so vocally supported by pretty much the whole committee. Yes, I'll take one more uh, answer. I will say. Uh, thank you. Um, we voted abs uh, absent, but yeah, and um, abstained. But we abstained because we are not. Um, we think this press statement could have gotten way farther. We would have liked very much to also condemn the human rights violations. And from regarding our past history with Iran, we do think it's very difficult to negotiate with the government and to work together with the government. We do think this is a conflict that needs to be solved in a different manner. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes so I mean just to highlight the answers made here, so anyone in the committee feel free to answer, but in the end you just accept the fact that you just was your opinion as a committee, but didn't actually come up with any concrete measures to solve that problem. Uh, China. I, 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 I think that the statement itself is an incredible position to make. By making such a statement, the Security Council is showing that they have finally taken an interest and also shown that we as a council are prepared to try and come to lasting solutions with the Iranian government. It may not come across as much, but that is also the intent. We want to be able to approach Iran with such a statement and get them to the negotiating table so that we can attempt to come to a solution similar to as was done with the Iranian nuclear deal. All right, Russia? Uh, we'd like to firstly uh, wholeheartedly associate ourselves with the remarks by our honourable friend and member for China. We feel the nature of the 
phrasings of this statement very much had to do with struggles that became evident in previous analysis. It had to do with the fact that there were actors within this committee who were partisan of international policies, particularly the United States, who were siding with one group rather than the other and trying to tailgate on the value and the respect which the Security Council commands in order to facilitate their domestic political interests. They failed to do so thanks to the um, principles which were enshrined in the rights of the United Nations Security Council that were wisely implemented after World War II so as to avoid this being a block thing rather than an international thing. We feel, by the way, we, with the way we're doing this now, is we're doing two things. The first is to respect Iran, to be respectful to the government and to the different regional acts in Iran, so as to give them the right to be drivers of the dialogue, to give them the right to do it on their terms, in their own national interest, in respect to respecting the national culture, the identity and the mode in which political discourse is facilitated in this country, at the same time avoiding that there be disrepute to the Security Council, because if we make the mistake once of this being this body being perceived as a partisan actor, as an extended part of interest of the interest, the economic interest of the United States, the validity and the respect which the committee commands will be lost. And we feel that this would be a very dangerous thing indeed, and that's why we have to go this way. And it's a great shame that the United States abstained, because they um, essentially thereby uh, invalidate a substantial part of the precedent. Thank you. Perhaps? Yes, uh, we'd like to underline now, we were in favor of this precedent because we saw it, although as a win also for the Western world, as this was finally an attempt to tackle the situation in Iran, this does not undermine the continuous and vehement resistance that Russia and China uh, sh had shown in dealing with the overall human, uh, human rights situation in Iran. Now, we are open to dialogue with Iran, and you have stated this, but this does not underline our original position over the government, over our, criti uh, over our crit critiques that have been voiced before this council went in session, over their handling of the protesters, and over their handling of the rule of, our uh, of, the rule of law. And as Russia was trying to point out partisan issues, well, Russia and China have also been partisans in this committee. So it was not only the West that took a side in a way, but also especially Russia that opposed constantly measures. And it is as such that France would like to remind the press corps that Russia opposed any uh, uh, any um, references to human rights during this procedure and actually went on to point fingers with just about anyone else in the committee while also themselves committing human rights violations. Thanks. United States. Thank you. It is funny that Russia is um, accusing the United States of siding with one side. Actually, we do believe that Russia is siding with the state and then also China is siding with the state. Uh, we do believe it's, it's important to think about what does the state consist of? people, the people we need to protect, the people we need to take into account. And right now the people of Iran are not happy. The people are being hurt, sexually, violence, um, they are being killed. And so we believe it's also important to protect the people. And in our press statement, sadly, it is more about trying to dialogue with the state, which is of course an important start. But regarding the extremism of this situation right now, regarding that people are being killed and that this is totally getting out of control. This is um, a danger to our international security. So we believe there should be more measures than just dialogue. And there should be measures that are not only working together with the state, but think about our principles as the United Nations, our principles to be there for the people, to work for our people. Thank you. Brief response to that very quickly. There is one error which the United States are committing in this. Well, there are two errors. The first error is that the United States are 
assuming that through their perception of the situation in the foreign country, they can deduce that there's a settled will. This is very hard to maintain. Iran holds democratic elections which are supervised by international observers which have established a government. This is something that we can internationally justify. The protests are very, very complicated things. You can have a million people in 2019 protesting outside West, Westminster Parliament, the best Westminster Parliament in the UK, without seeing that a week later the Conservative Party got a sweeping majority in favour of Brexit in the, in the general election. You can say that the people outside the capital on January the 6th, 2021, were representing the will of the people in their capacities as protesters. It's very, very dangerous to take momentary observations of individual actions being taken in a country as indicative of the settled will of, of the foreign country. The second point is that and the record of this of our proceedings will reflect this, is that although Russia has bilateral ties to Iran, unlike Western actors, we did deliberately and repeatedly not use the body to side with them. We feel that the United Nations Security Council is to be facilitated, and we are repeatedly put on the record that the purpose of this is not to preempt the result of a domestic conflict in foreign countries. We want to work with the country. We want to facilitate them as an international actor. But we do not want to say we are the just jury and executioner in other countries' affairs deciding who other countries should be governed by. This is the difference. And this is, this is false policy. This is false politics. It's very much the idea of the US posing as a great messiah leading the Iranians to Sunday Uplands in the sense that they know better than the Iranians themselves what is good for them. And this is very, very dangerous politics. Uh, I think one final response from the UK. Thank you very much. Um, you know, can you, it seems find it very unfortunate that this council, not even for a press conference, can all stand behind a statement that was absolutely voted upon and is now released to the world. We, as a council, have one power, and as we previously stated, it is the power of dialogue and diplomacy. And this statement is a big symbol of the interest of the Security Council in the matters of Iran, which is the absolute priority. So I would encourage my colleagues and different members of this council to refrain from further attacks on the different members of this body. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> in the interest of time, we will just move along with the questions, but moving on the same time, I would like to hear maybe two responses. Uh, you said uh, as a committee in the press statement that this is intended to be a negotiation with the Iranian government about how to deal with this sad situation. However, uh, to us it seems like the Iranian government may have a big hand in the problem with the protests. So what if the Iranian government was not to come to the table to negotiate and did not have any interest in solving said problem to any level of success um, and thus um, going against the press statement released by the UNSC. I will just listen to two responses, so Russia. Quick. Well, we had a visitor in our proceeding, which was the representative of the government of Iran. They expressed a general willingness to work with us, and that is their right. And that's why we drafted this press release that we are prepared to be working with them. Again, what we said earlier is meaningful, namely that this is to occur on their terms. It is not our terms. We are, as the Security Council, an international, impartial, neutral facilitator for the development of the situation. We're not an actor. We are not siding. So the Iranians will have to come to us. If they choose to come to us, it is their right. We will work with them. But it is, and this is significant, this is not a multilateral thing. This is not a conflict between nations where there's other things such as the responsibility to protect or uh, aspects of the charter that that warrant and mandates to the Security Council. This is a domestic affair, and this is why we require their consent. And this is why their consent comes first. If they choose to come to us, we'll work with them. If they choose to take other avenues, to work bilaterally or to do not, not do anything of the nature, that's their right. Friends? Oh, this is more Russia's position than yeah. meeting. And I'd like to underline this as, th we also see this as an opportunity for Iran to well, uh, 
move towards a path of cooperation and we welcome this cooperation with absolute favor and we'd be ready to take the steps necessary towards an ease of the situation. But if Iran refuses to do so, and we have already stated in this committee multiple times which our what, what our position is on this, is a tough stance on Iran, a tough stance on sanctions, and a tough stance on the regime. Now, this, we are lending them a hand. We're inviting them to talk. And France will always support this, and this is why we were in favor of this. But in case they do not do this, instead of Russia's position, we have a tougher, far tougher position on the issue. Thank you. Mr. Chair, you asked for an extension of September? 